You're right, girls. You're right. Pretty girlies. They're pretty girlies. Is what mid-February now about mid-February anyway so I'm gonna do a bit of a plot tour um, incredibly exciting this afternoon I'm gonna be sowing tomatoes which feels like real spring stuff <laughs> it feels like we're kind of kicking off for the year so oh wow they're coming over thick and fast this morning <laughs> that was like a two-second gap Yeah, so getting the tomatoes in really feels like the beginning of like the new season, new year. This is what we've got growing this year, stuff, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, even though we've already got the chilies and the aubergines and things in, they're, they're so early in the year that like it doesn't feel real. Tomatoes is the day. Anyway, thought we would just do a bit of a look around the plot, uh, see where we are at the beginning of uh, the season. Um, we have done quite a lot of tidying up from all of the things that we lost during um, the real cold snap. Um, I haven't done anything about the uh, nine star broccoli. It's still looking very sad, but I've got like the um, EnviroMesh over the top of it. So it's like shroud, so I can't see it. <laughs> right, okay, let's have a look. We're gonna start down shed end, have a look what's going on in the greenhouse and do like, you know, like we normally do, you know, we just go round. Starting off as normal, the shed is a tip. <laughs> I really need to sort this out. It's looking a disaster zone. Um, we have got uh, one pumpkin left, uh, which is one that never really ripened. So we don't, don't really know what we're gonna do with it. Although I was in Waitrose the other day and their pumpkins looked as sorry as that one. So <laughs> I think we will give it a go. I've also got like two massive bags of gladioli to get in. So must get them in ASAP. Outside, We've got some beautiful girlies. <laughs> hey girls, just cover you back up. Hey, girly whirly woos. Yeah, right, and next to said beautiful girlies, we have got the two apple trees. You know, at this time of year when they just start looking like there's a little bit of life going on. Look at that. God, I love this time of year. Underneath, we have got some hyacinths have come up. That's entangled with garlic chives. The wild garlic that we put in last week is going along, isn't it, girlies? Yeah, wild garlic, woo woo woo, exciting. Um, Canaliculatus is coming up in clumps. This didn't flower last year, so I've got high hopes for this year. The Arctic bells of pure joy are still shining away. They have multiplied so much. Just beautiful little things. I love them so much. Hopefully we're gonna end up with a huge carpet of them. The uh, hellebores are flowering. Come on, have a look in there. Magic, that purple and that yellow of the um, Arctic Bells is just a joy. This area I've got big plans for. Where we've got this bench on this side, I'm going to remake the top of that and make it permanent, like properly attach it to the shed. And I've got to stabilize that potting bench at the back. Also got to sort out all the pots because it's chaos. More bulbs coming up under the mulberry tree. I'm not giving the mulberry tree a cut back. I cut it back really harshly last year, uh, but it recovered fine, so that's good. Not gonna touch it this year. Wood pile, desperately needs a sort out. This whole area at the back here, I'm going to, I'm back in pallet collecting mode and I'm going to kind of fence it off around here, try and make this space a little bit more usable. Let's have a look in the greenhouse. Not a great deal going on here. We've got most of the things at home because it's still a bit too cold at the moment, but the garlic, I'm so pleased with how strong that garlic's looking. The two varieties that we've got in the two different boxes and then the mixed bag on the end. These ones are planted much closer together. These poor chaps had a real struggle getting out of their outfits. Look at him. <laughs> and this guy hasn't even made it yet, blimey. They've pushed themselves out of the soil with their root growth, but just yeah, having a bit of a struggle on top. These are the pink panther onions. No action happening there yet, but at least they're in. Uh, sweet peas. These are looking 
blinding. They're so strong. And I've got some more actually, so I'm going to do fill up the other side of that tray when I get some compost. I'm feeling about sweet peas this year. You can quote me on that when they're a complete fail. <laughs> yeah, we've had a couple of years of real pants sweet peas, so um, I'm hoping that they're gonna be fantabulous. Yeah, okay. What else have we got in here? The sea kale, the cranberry, is uh, still alive, which is excellent. <laughs> um, and then we've got the goji berry, which is also just starting to show signs of life. So yeah, that is the greenhouse. I've got quite a lot of work to do on the end there. I've got to level that bench at the back again because the bricks have moved. Um, just makes watering so much easier if it's completely level. Otherwise the ones at the front will get all the water and the ones at the back dry as a bone. Shallots are looking gorgeous. Um, again, we're growing these in pots and compost, not our own soil because of the white rot. But so far they're looking really strong. I'm really happy with them. This corner, I've actually already got my um, comfrey feed set to go. That was from the very last cutting of the comfrey last year. It stinks. <laughs> so I've got that pot and I've also got another one under here ready to go. So I will be feeding comfrey feed and seaweed. Going to do a mixture of the two of them this year. This area, can you see that little blush of green across the soil? <laughs> this is where I threw down all that grass seed. You see it's all coming up. So this is, I'm going to be twiddling my toes in this grass while sat on the swing seat with my sausages on the barbecue very soon. Like I can't wait. I cannot wait for summer at the moment. The two beds that I moved, this one's full of rocket. I don't know if you remember, I just dumped all the rocket that was growing in the old bed, like big clods of turf in here and it took fine. So we're just eating our way through this bed. This is going to be where we put the Red Duke of York potatoes this year. The other end, I've got a bit of parsley growing. Uh, there's a very sad looking thyme down here which I'm going to transplant out and then we've got some chives which I also need to move before we get the potatoes in. So that is going to be potatoes in that bed and then this bed is where we have got the onions from set, so three different types in here. Not sure really why three of them on the end are covered with bottles. This is a scheme that mum has got going on that I am not privy to. Um, but you can see we've got massive gaps. Lots of them were hoiked out by birds and things. So I've got those ones in the greenhouse ready to infill the gaps in this bed. Sorrel is looking fantastic considering the weather we've had. Normally it's almost doing nothing by now. But yep, that is looking beautiful. Underneath this, which is the carrot whitefly box, um, I've just got it resting over some of these um, chard, which have survived actually. We lost about two thirds of them in this bed, but I mean, this one mm, doesn't look great, does it? <laughs> Don't think he's going, but the other two, three, four in here, I reckon we'll get some good spring pickings off them. So it was worth uh, holding on to them. This is a mixture of uh, the Bietta basic kind of perpetual spinach and a white stemmed chard, the Cavallo Nero. This, this stuff this year has been an absolute star. Look at it. It's like a big green brain. Not a hint of white fly under there, which is a miracle. They're coming on really strong. We have been eating so much of this. We've been picking it um, to within an inch of its life, but it's still going strong. It's been killer this year. In the middle of this bed, I've got some spring cabbages, which I'm just growing for greens. It probably be picking them about May time. They're really closely planted together because I'm just going to be using them as leaf growth rather than waiting for them to head into proper cabbages. But yeah, the Cavalanero, oh, it, it's just so beautiful. I love that crinkly, oh, it's just gorgeous. Something else which really suffered in the frost, uh, but looks like it's coming back, are the leaf chicory. Even if these ones go to seed really quick and flower, I'll be collecting the seed from them. But I've but I'm optimistic. There's some uh, little pack choys down here, which also survived the cold, which I was pretty impressed with. Totally uncovered they were. Um, beetroot in the other end. The beetroot that was uncovered went soft, but we just had a little plastic cloche over these ones and they're all fine. You can see they're not massive, um, but they're still good. So we are still munching our way through them. Got another cloche with some spinach in it over there, but these strawberries here are going to be shunted over into the main asparagus bed. They are going to be growing uh, in sort of companion planting with the asparagus next year. 
so they're moving over there and under the cloches on this side I've got some chard which has been in since when did I put that in October it's just been sitting there like biding its time as soon as we start getting longer days of warmer weather that is going to uh, leap into action I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it survived under those little cloches. It survived perfectly well all that horrific weather we had. So pretty good. Mulched the second asparagus bed. We might even be picking from this bed this springtime. So that's exciting. I've got a lot of work to do up this edge. These are where the beans, French beans are going to go. And um, yeah, full of grass. <laughs> but the tops are still strong. So I'll just restring them and get them sorted. We've also mulched. Uh, the other bed on the other side of here which is empty apart from some field beans the next bed along had uh was absolutely full with brassicas we've got these red cabbages on this end i've never had success with red cabbage so i don't know what they're going to do but <laughs> at least all six of them are still there which is more than can be said for these guys which i believe were supposed to be green cabbages and purple sprouting broccoli but <whistles> they are just there were six of each and I think I've got two of each left and yeah, sad, but not as sad as this. These are the state of the nine star broccoli. Now you can really see they have suffered so badly. I just hope they're going to sprout from the bottom. I mean, the tree cabbage you can see has survived. One of them has. We had two in here, but my beautiful nine star. Oh, there's a Lil. You right, Lil? A pussycat? A meow meow? Yeah. Go down and see mum. She's down there somewhere. But yeah, they. I'm hoping they're going to start uh, sprouting from the bottom. You can see one of them has got a good sprout on the bottom, which is going to survive. So yeah, fingers crossed for these because I will be a very sad person if they completely go. This Enviromesh, um, I wish I'd put it on there before we had that really hard frost because I think it would have completely saved them if what it did for the chard is anything to go by. More field beans in the next bed, although somebody is still digging them up, which isn't doing them any favours, but um, I'm not that fussed, to be honest. We've got leeks in the end of this bed, which we're still eating. They are riddled with uh, allium leaf miner, but I don't mind a bit of extra protein in my leeks. Haha, -ha, project bed. So, you know, I was fixing this one up last week i've got big plans for this but i'm in two minds about what exactly to do with it so this is going to be the tomato bed you see how it's only four foot wide and i'm thinking about building another structure over the top of it like the polytunnel so square topped you know um, and then making like a little path down the center these are me doing bricks miming <laughs> and then have tomatoes on this side and this side in like two aisles going down the center and it'd be covered in plastic or I might go for a prefab poly tunnel style but it will be wider so it would come almost to the edge of the fruit cage and that would mean I would be able to get really quite a lot of tomatoes because it'd be from this edge all the way over to there wide you see but then it'd be a prefab and we'd be missing the path. And then I don't know whether we'd be able to get the grass sorted out between them. Ah, I just don't know. But I'm going to be doing one of those two things to put a tomato house on that bed. Because the tomato variety excess is extreme this year. <laughs> There's no way they're going in the polytunnel that we've already got. End of this bed is clear, ready to be mulched. Just got a bit of garlic chives in the end. Now this, here you see with the Viramesh that I should have put over the Nine Star. I didn't realise it was going to suffer that badly at all. But this is the Lucullus chard, which is normally soft as anything. Survived all that frost, no worries with this Enviromesh box over the top of it. So I will know for the future that if we're going to get horrid, horrid cold like we did, it's all about the Enviromesh. It really is. Basically blank bed. We've got some uh, lamb's lettuce in the end here, which we have been picking. That's been sort of just, you know, a bit of salady stuff, which is nice to have at this time of year. In the same vein, I've got this American cress, which has been brilliant. I don't know if you remember, I have this kind of broad sewn across the whole end of this bed. And uh, when I realised I needed the bed for something else, I just shunted it all to this end, you know, transplanted it. And it's been brilliant. Such a nice, so it's quite peppery, but look, really nice little shaped leaves. Um, yeah, great stuff. Got some very sad kohlrabi in there and the broad beans. Broad beans are looking really sad. These are the Aguadolfi that 
should have been my autumn sown ones and there should have been an awful lot more in this bed than there are. Uh, we've lost a lot, like you see this one. Isn't that a healthy looking specimen? Yeah, uh, but they are, some of them have survived and they are kind of coming good from the base. So I've got high hopes for what is in here. It's just a lot less than I thought. And the decision is, do I infill with Aguadolfi or do I just cut my losses and go for the spring ones, which is going to be Eleanor Express? Mm -mm -mm, not sure. Fruit cage. Mum has been doing an incredible job in here. She's just been working away, weeding it through because it was in a terrible state. I don't know if you remember. This was just all weeds. Uh, I need to sort out the raspberry structures because uh, that was a complete fail last year. Raspberries were great, but the structure was useless. Grapevine. I need to sort that out because it's got into a bit of a mess, but that's good. Uh, we might even get some grapes this year. It's been in for, what, two, three years now? But yeah, mum has weeded all of this. Fantastic. Uh, this is where I did the gooseberries last week. They're all looking okay. The black currant that we planted last year uh, has survived and is springing back into life, which is lovely. It's really like fat buds. The ones that I was really worried about, so this is the red currant that we planted at the same time as that black currant. It really suffered in the summer. It lost all its leaf. Uh, so it's basically looked like just dead sticks since the summer. Uh, but look, Look at this, we have green. <laughs> we have green on it. Uh, so it's probably gonna need a real big chop back to the base, but uh, yeah, it's alive, which is great. So is the Loganberry. Uh, if you look in the base here, we've got a couple of big fat buds just about to burst forth on there, which is exciting. Strawberry hanging baskets. These are fantastic, but uh, strawberries all just suffered the heat and the cold and everything I need to replant them. So get them sorted for the spring. The dodgy tulips are coming up everywhere. Still don't know what's happening with the dahlias. There was one in there, it's completely rotted out. So we know we've lost that one, that was Franz Kafka. But the rest of them, look, the tubers that were at the surface are mush, just mush. They are planted really quite deep though. So I'm hopeful that what's really deep underneath will have survived and they'll come back because that will be such a shame. We have still been eating turnips. <laughs> they survived the cold, which was pretty uh, nice. We've got the Purple Top Milan has survived an awful lot better than the Snowball, which is the white one. The white ones have gone really gnarly, um, but the Purple Top Milan is still perfect. They haven't been covered. They've just been left to their own devices. So I was quite impressed with that. And in this top bed, we've got the Green Wave Mustard, which has been fantastic. We're still eating that and the pak choy and interestingly look the green pak choy has survived really well the red pak choy that was about three times bigger than that, it terrible so it's all about green pak choy over the winter i think yeah the red ones um really suffered in the frost and now they've gone to seed so yeah let's have a look at some fruit trees the apricot uh bulbs are coming up around the bottom which is satisfying but this is a terrible worry that <laughs> they're already starting to show a bit of flower and oh no i mean apricots flower so early but oh fig we have had a bit of uh, die back at the top um but the plant itself looks pretty chipper so why isn't this focusing there we go uh yeah a bit of die back we'll need a bit of a chop um once it's coming to leaf and i can see what's what but it's still looking lovely bay tree again it's time for bay tree chop back although it's looking so healthy look at the size of the leaves i mean it's like they're like the size of my whole hand they're massive gorgeousness hey little absolutely gorgeous bay leaves <gasps> gorgeous bay. so that's basically the main beds going top to bottom the winter savory has had a bit of a chop back the uh, camellia this is the one you know because the dead one at the bottom this one's looking gorgeous Leaf mould, we are well equipped. This is a really, really deep bin and it's pretty much to the top, which is pleasing. Uh, that's like a double height, one of those stack beds. And we've also got some, this is uh, leaf mould and compost from last year. Compost bins, I'm making progress with this. I've had to pause, so I've cleared one bed. I've had to pause because of my back. Bin number two is going to go into bin number three, which is this one, and then I'll turn all that fresh stuff into bin number two and we'll start filling up from the beginning again. 
Another area of the plot where I've got lots to do is this area. I've started taking these bricks away, you can see, but this is where we've got the Jerusalem artichokes and they did phenomenally this year. They have been absolutely perfect and delicious and the leaf mould, I think, did them a world of good. But what I'm going to do is when we've dug them up and then we'll replant some of them, I'm going to move them just slightly to the left. So we've still got enough room to get into the compost bins, but it gives me enough room that between where the rhubarb is in that bed and where the artichokes start I'll be able to get the carrot box which is the same as this rhubarb one but I've already got the carrot box cover down there so I don't want to just make a new carrot bed I'm just going to plonk it straight there and we'll get some carrots in just wondering what that noise was mum is fighting with the netting shed door <laughs> pear tree bursting into life it's exciting, might even get some pears off it this year. We did get two pears last year actually, which was a bit of a surprise, um, but they were quite small. Cherry tree, also looking lively, which is lovely. We all, it's funny, we got two pears last year and we got two cherries. <laughs> this area all needs a bit of work. Um, unfortunately, I think we've lost our gunnera, which was in this spot here. I've had a bit of a dig around, there's absolutely nothing going on under there also been having a route around in the pond and I mean I'm really pleased to say that the water lily has survived it's starting to send up new leaves and things I was a bit worried about that because it all went black <laughs> but yeah all good in there I've got those windows I've got to make a cloche with actually I must remember that put some wood aside to do that loads of stuff coming up in here I think a lot of it's weed we've got grass and things but there are um Californian poppies coming up which is nice, we'll try and save some of them when we're weeding this out. Lickness on the end, netting shed, which also needs a clear out. I won't even open the doors because everything will fall out. The hot lip salvia has survived the cold, which is really pleasing. Uh, daffs, look how far ahead these are, they're about to be out. Beauty beauties. The, um, the honeysuckle has responded really well to that cold weather. It's looking lush and gorgeous, I need to tie that in apple tree this is our cox's orange pippin that we moved and it's had a lot of branches uh, die back it's uh, still alive but three of these main branches at the top are completely gone which is going to make it an interesting shape <laughs> of the herb bed the oregano suffered really badly but you can see it's just coming back so i'm going to chop all of this stuff off at the top and uh, that should come back perfectly actually it's it's looking much better underneath the protection of the sage which is interesting. Sage is looking fine. The hyssop has gone a bit collapsed though, so I'll give that a chop back. And more chives, more chives. We've got uh, thyme and rosemary on this side and also a sedum, which is not edible, but it's beautiful. I love it this time of year where it gets these like, they look like little like Brussels sprouts all at the bottom. It's just gorgeous. What a beautiful plant. So, okay, let's have a look in the polytunnel. Nothing's really going on in there. I've been prepping it for tomatoes. This new, um, this new Velcro that I've put on here is so strong. I'm trying to stick my arm around. Yeah, so I've filled up the beds, new compost, and I've got chard in the corner, which a bit like the chard that we've got outside. It's going to leap into life uh, in the spring and probably clash with my tomato planting out. So this might be nursery bed and I will stick them out into the beds proper. Lavender has survived which is pleasing because I thought that might go. And here we are, back down the bottom, back to the Arctic Bells. Hey, whirly, girly, girly woos. Yeah, girlies. I know, what a flying tour, huh? What a flying tour. And a lil. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful, but a oh, beautiful pussycat. He's so beautiful. Yeah, mum has taken refuge in the greenhouse. <laughs> Is it warm? <laughs> so there we go. Uh, that is mid-February 2023 uh, plot tour. There's a lot less going on um, than there was this time last year, but then we've had the weather, haven't we? Uh, and to be honest, I'm quite pleased with what we still have got going. I mean, although um, this time of year, we're not normally picking a huge amount anyway, we would have had quite a lot more stuff growing in the polytunnel. Um, and also, I think the time that we're going to feel it is kind of March, April, May time when the stuff that has been growing over winter would normally be producing a lot of stuff to eat. So the um, nine star broccoli and then you get all the cabbage leaves and then a lot of the 
um, flowering stuff. So although we're going to get quite a lot of flowers off the Cavalier Nero, we would normally have quite a lot of other bits and pieces going on, which we're not going to have. It's not the end of the world. And also, things are looking quite tidy. Because we've got a lot of clear beds, we've been able to kind of get the groundwork in. So I feel a little bit ahead of the game, which is a bit of an unnerving feeling. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Yeah, I feel like something's going to go wrong. But now I've got two kind of, well, three, four, four quite large building projects that I need to get done before we're into the full, like, hit of spring. I need to fix up that bench that's outside, the potting bench that's outside the shed. I want to get that sorted. Um, obviously, we've got to make some big decisions about where we're going to grow the overflow of tomatoes in the tomato house, whether it's going to be roundy top or square top like this chap or what we're going to do with that. Um, I've got to fix a gate between, so between the poly house and the chicken house is just um, open and I want to put a gate there. I've actually already got the gate. It's a home. I've had it since like October and I haven't, <laughs> haven't got it up yet. So I've got to do that. And what was the other thing? I'm sure there was a fourth thing. No, well, I just counted four things before I started listing them and I, no, they're gone. But there was four things, so there's one other thing I need to do that is quite large. Can't remember what it is. So we'll just scrap that one. Three things I need to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, but now for the excitement, I think uh, we should go home and sow some tomatoes. Hey, look, hey, look, we're going to sow tomatoes, we're going to sow well I came home from the allotment started cooking dinner and then time just disappeared so I have waited until the morning cheers with a cup of coffee mm. oh, that's hot <laughs> Whew, I might leave that one for a minute um yeah so it's morning it is tomato day and I'm going to talk you through the various varieties that I'm doing this year so a couple of things to mention first of all a lot of these varieties that I'm growing this year I have never grown before. Some of them, I can definitely tell you they're great, which is why I'm growing them again. But so many of these tomatoes are new ones for me. And the other thing is that because they've been incredibly generously given to me by people, a lot of them are in seed packets without pictures on, you know, their people have divided their own seed to give me some, which is amazing. But it does mean that I've spent quite a lot of time looking up each variety to see what they are, or what they look like, etc, etc. <laughs> So yeah, some of the descriptions may be a little vague, but as we go through the season, uh, we're gonna be testing all of these tomatoes and we will have an enormous tomato taste fest at the end of the season when we've got some of all of them. And when I say all of them, it's quite a lot. <laughs> so yeah, although we didn't actually get round to sowing the tomatoes yesterday, mum and I did sit down with the tomato box and make some executive decisions. And when we counted all of those tomatoes, out all the different varieties that we've got the seed for we had was just over 50 it was like 52 varieties I think of tomato seed <laughs> and um, there's actually three varieties of tomato which I know I want to grow this year that I don't have seed for so it would have been what 52 55 varieties of tomato now there is no way I have space to grow that many tomatoes <laughs> It's just, even with the excitement of the new tomato house, I'd have to cover like four beds of the allotment to grow that many tomatoes. And that's just not gonna happen. So yeah, executive decisions have been made and we've had to choose not to sow some tomatoes this year. So actually we ended up choosing 35 varieties out of those that we're gonna try this year. And I've still got the seed for all the rest of them. So. We'll go through this 35 this year, pick the best to grow next year, and then we'll try the other lot next year. Yeah, we'll try them all eventually. <laughs> hmm. So I have broken them down into four categories. So like the big beefsteak ones, we have got cherry tomatoes, we've got mid-sized tomato, and then there's another category, which we're actually gonna grow at home. They are all red tomatoes. Hang on, where are they? Yeah, so when my tomatoes failed last year, I was very kindly sent a load of short season tomatoes. These chaps, there were uh, seven varieties. The hope was, is because I'd had my tomatoes fail, and by then it was about May, 
June, <laughs> I can't even remember when it was, but it was late. And so I was sent these as like, come on, you might still get some tomatoes. Unfortunately, it was just too late and we didn't get any. But it did mean I had the seed left. And what we're gonna do is grow all of these varieties in the back garden. And they are, don't throw them on the ground. And they are Legend, Jet Setter, Oregon Spring, Early Wonder, Early Pick, and Silettes. So that is the first set. So they're all gonna be grown outdoors. These are the only ones that are gonna be grown outdoors and they're gonna be grown in the back garden. Oh man. <laughs> I've just, been, I'm sitting here like surrounded by chaos of seeds and I've just looked over underneath the tomato box and there's another five that weren't in the mix yesterday. So what does that make it? Like 60 varieties of tomato. And these ones I haven't even looked at. So I suspect uh, I'm gonna have to add to it. But I haven't checked them out yet. <laughs> I haven't done the research and I haven't discussed it with the mother. So these ones I've also got Get Stuffed, Evan's Purple Pear, Prairie Fire, Nepal Tomato, Oh, and that's Japanese black trifelli. I've got that one, that's go. Definitely doing that one. So these ones haven't been decided on yet. If you've got anything to say about Get Stuffed, Evan's Purple Pear, Prairie Fire or Nepal, hit me in the comments. Uh, I'll make a decision about them with mum. <laughs> oh, there's probably a whole nother box of tomatoes around here somewhere as well, man. Okay, well, talking of um, the Japanese black trifelli, you have heard me go on about it. If you are a watcher of uh, Tony C. Smith's Potty Mouth Garden Club, The Lives, uh, you will have heard me talking a lot about Japanese black trifelli because I just think it's the most beautiful tomato ever. It's a gorgeous, big, fat bummed, narrow top. So it looks like a coin purse, like a medieval coin purse. Um, it's rich, really, really dark, prolific, delicious, makes a fantastic slicing tomato, makes great pasta sauce. It's, it's just amazing. Why am I bothering growing the rest of them? <laughs> yeah, basically, that is my star tomato. It always used to be black Russian, but I think if I had to choose, it's Japanese black trifelli. I am also growing black Russian. <laughs> So let's start with the big boy tomatoes because they're the biggest category this year and most of them I don't actually have any experience of other than the Japanese black trifelli, having just talked about that one. And black Russian, I'm going to be growing that one. Black Russian is a bit of a gnarly tomato. They're really big, quite dark red bummed and then like an olive green on top. They often have like gnarly splits in them but they taste blinding. They're, yeah, they're just brilliant. What a brilliant, brilliant tomato. And they grow really well outside. So I'm doing those. And the third one that I know really well, but is a bit of a mystery one, you will have heard me talk about this before if you've been here for more than one tomato season, is the Bulgarian mystery tomato. These are saved seed from the most enormous tomatoes I've ever seen uh, and grown outside as well, actually. Not for me, but when I first saw them, we had a guy three allotments up from us, Bulgarian bloke, hence the name. And he grew like rows and rows and rows and rows of these tomatoes, which were like I'm not kidding you, like they pulled the plants over, they were so huge, they all ripened outside. But then he had to go back to Bulgaria, so he left and he hadn't harvested them. So like most of the allotment like went round saving seeds, incredible tomato variety. So across uh, my allotment site, we've all got this mystery Bulgarian tomato variety which we grow every year because it is brilliant. I'm a bit limited on seed this year for that because last year was such a disaster tomato year, but I'm going to try and save loads of this for next year and so if anybody's interested in it I will kind of try and start saving seed for other people and we can proliferate the Bulgarian tomato love. Okay, the rest of the big boys in this category are Solar Flare, which is a red tomato, these are all the big boys, a big fat red tomato with yellow streaks. There's Anas Noir, which is a tomato I've wanted to grow for ages which is sort of all the colours. It's red, green, yellow, the whole shebang. Looks like a beautiful tomato and I've heard really good things about it. Cherokee purple, which is a big dark red tomato. Copper river is like an olive green outside, but then when you cut into it, it's bright red inside. 
Alice's Dream. Now I couldn't find out whether this one was a beefsteak or a mid-sized tomato. Everything I looked up seemed to give me both, but it's pretty stunning by the look of it. It's orange with like really, really dark red, almost black streaky stripy bits on it. So that sounds pretty good. We've got pork chop, which is a massive yellow one. And we've also got Captain Lucky, which is a green slicer. So over that whole selection, we've got really dark ones, really bright ones, yellow, streaky, stripy. Some of them are green on the outside, red on the inside. Some of them are red on the outside, green on the inside, just a whole mix. So I'm quite excited about that. Last year, that was the thing I missed most of all the tomatoes. Although I love having the cherries, that you can just like eat as you go past. Just having those massive, massive tomatoes just sliced up, load of basil, salt, olive oil. God, I'm looking forward to summer. <laughs> yes, yeah, so talking of cherries, the seed that I don't have is Brad's Atomic Grape and I will definitely be growing that again this year because I've grown that to do, do, do three years now and it's a stunner of a tomato although I think some people uh, pick them too early so because they are a bit confusing because when they start growing so they are a elongated cherry tomato and when they start growing they're already quite dark in colour they're like a purple and green streaky stripiness but you have to wait for them to get really quite an orange tinge to them before they're ripe and then they are beautiful so that's the one I don't have I'm growing rosella, which is like a uh, champagne pink, quite dark, but like sparkly uh, cherry tomato, which was really fantastic. I'm growing one that I've never grown before, which is called Green Doctor, which is a green cherry tomato. I'm doing Garnet, which is the one I do every year because it is stunning. Uh, really dark, really, really dark. And, uh, but it's got a taste like, you know, a lot of cherry tomatoes are just sweet. Like all they've got going on for them is that they're super sweet and juicy. This has got more of an in-depth flavour like some of the real big boys. Mm, love it. Oh, I'm also going to be growing sun gold. I always do one plant, but I never really grow that one from seed because it's such a common tomato. You always find it in the garden centre as a plant. So I will pick up one of them when I spy it. But yeah, so how many is that? That is three, four, five. So I'm doing five different cherry tomatoes, a dark red one, a green one, a pink one, a black and gold stripy one, and a yellow. That's a pretty good mix. Plan that quite well. <laughs> and then the last category is like the mid-size and the plum tomatoes. Uh, I'm doing Tigerella. Uh, I used to do Derby Striped. Um, I had some heritage seed that I got from Delfland Organics a couple of years ago and saved my own. When I did sow them last year, they didn't germinate. Uh, but there's Tigarella, which is also a yellow and red stripey mid-sized tomato. So I'm going to be doing this one instead because I don't have any Derby Stripe seed. But I think Tigarella, pretty well-known variety. I think it's a good one. I'm doing Indigo Apple. I don't know if you remember this one. I thought I managed to buy this as a replacement last year from the garden centre. It was labelled Indigo Apple, which is quite a distinctive tomato. It's got a green bum and a, like a dark, dark purple top. Well, whatever it was that I had in that pot uh, was not Indigo Apple. So I'm going to give it an actual go from seed this time. Pink Fang. When I look these up, they're quite extraordinary. They're really, really long, like a plum tomato, but like it's been stretched and they're quite like a pale red colour. Black Icicle is much more of a classic plum tomato, kind of dark red colour. Black Beauty. Uh, if you are on Instagram and you follow uh, Mr. Newland, uh, he always grows this tomato and it's just shockingly black. It is like uh, somebody has doctored a photograph. They're just incredible. So I'm really looking forward to them. And the last tomato of the year, apart from the ones I haven't decided on yet and the ones I haven't got the seed for yet, but the ones that we've got here, <laughs> are these chaps. Look, we've actually got a picture of these. Korean long, uh, pointy plum style tomato and apparently delicious. So talking of delicious, part of the thing that we kind of went when I was doing the research into which ones we are gonna grow, which ones we're not, it's very tempting when you see a tomato that looks beautiful, but then when it says it's like a show tomato or um, stunning tomato, and then it says light, sweet flavor. I 
just don't think that's really worth anything. Light, I don't want a light sweet flavour in my tomato. I want to be whacked around the face with tomato marvellousness. And it's incredible how different they can taste. Like if you have a polytunnel with so many different varieties of tomato in it and they all look different and they all taste different and you just cut them up into big fat chunks and cover them in a bit of salt, a bit of basil. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited to have tomatoes again because last year just wasn't good, was it? Just wasn't good. Right, I'm gonna finish this cup of coffee and I'm gonna go and sow some tomatoes. Oh, I've just remembered there's another one. <laughs> uh, in the mid-range category, I'm also growing green zebra, but uh, bloke two allotments up and over from me uh, is already growing them, so he's gonna give me one of his. Yeah, but that's where we are. That's where we are. Let's go and sow them. And there we have it, chaps. The tomatoes are started. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. I've sown two of each variety. Obviously, I've got a couple more varieties to go in, um, ones that I haven't decided on yet, and also the ones that I don't have the seed for at the moment. Um, but there's plenty of time to be sowing tomatoes. There is no rush to be doing it now. I just promised myself that I would hold out until halfway through February before I sowed them. And I've done that. So I'm happy. But you've got all the way through end of March, even April, you'll get away with it. So if you haven't sown yours yet, don't stress out about it. I'm putting mine into the heated propagator and giving them a good water with rainwater because I am not having a repeat of what happened last year. I don't think I could bear it. <laughs> so rainwater it is this year and they should be up in a matter of days because tomatoes germinate really, really quickly. Ah, tomatoes a go, tomatoes a go. Cheers, chaps. Mm. 
it is the middle of February and it really, really feels like we are on the towards spring now, doesn't it? So good. I'm so excited to have got those tomatoes in. That really is like a proper moment of the year, isn't it? Sowing the tomatoes. I did mention in the thing that you can, that this is early. Like I've sown mine now because I've got a heated propagator and I've got some lights for them. Um, sunny windowsill, if we've got the sunshine is fine, but if we don't have the sunshine and we end up having like three weeks or four weeks of terrible gray weather, they'd really suffer. So it just kind of depends. March is a good time to sow them if you don't have all that stuff. But yeah, talking about weather, today has been beautiful, but I've been uh, mostly stuck inside doing the editing of this week's video. Um, and we've got two more days ahead of us, or two or three more days ahead of us of like perfect blue skies when you look on the forecast. It's just like ch -ch 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 perfect sunshines. I'm not gonna be here. I'm gonna... <laughs> like when am I back I'm back on Friday when the thunderstorms start again so marvellous <laughs> oh well mum will be up the other and I might see if she can do a bit of filming we see we see if she can do some filming this week but yeah on the note of tomatoes I just want to say thank you to everybody who has sent me tomato seeds over the last couple of years this is like the culmination of about three years worth of people's varying donations of tomato seed and stuff so yeah fingers crossed for a really fantastic tomato year this year actually i tell you what i should show you what's happening with the chilies and aubergines and stuff shouldn't i right let's have a look at these chaps so do you remember when i potted these guys up there were some that hadn't germinated uh so i just left them for a bit longer and that's these boys here you can see like the little tiny ones but the ones that i potted up early are all looking pretty good front section here is all aubergines and then we've got chilies at the back there and sweet peppers at this end we've also got some particularly beautiful little cucumbers look at that can you see there's actually a baby cucumbers there gorgeousness gorgeousness and then underneath we have the tomatoes which will soon be cropping up it's funny every time i look at it i think this crack is something that's grown up and become really leggy <laughs> But it's just a crack in the in the thingy bobby so yeah things are looking pretty good here so yeah chilies peppers aubergines cucumbers all doing well the other thing i should show you if we're doing a full plot tour really for the um for mid-february is the stuff do you remember i sowed peas and uh onions well the peas are up much slower at that end it's amazing how much cooler it is just being like right next to the window over there. Um, the ones that were just out here germinated really, really quick. And my onions at last have come up. They have been so slow to germinate this year. And I've heard that from so many other people as well, that their onions are just hanging about, not doing anything. Anyway, they are up now. Yeah, so things are moving on, which is quite exciting. But I was just talking about the weather, because, you know, weather's a favorite subject. <laughs> um, last week, Actually, I'm going to end this video on, you know, I normally do a bit of like backwards or something at the end of the video. Um, I'm going to end this one on some beautiful weather that hit me. I went for a walk along the river at Barnes. Was it Monday, Tuesday? I think it might have been Tuesday morning. And I don't know if anybody else got hit with the mist. Morning started off like clear, no problems. And then this rolling mist just came down and it was like, yeah, it was like something out of like a post-apocalyptic wasteland down on the river. Went and had a cup of tea in Pembroke Lodge and then turned around and by the time I just had that cup of tea all the mist had burnt off and it was just crystal clear blue skies it was beautiful because walking back exactly the same way like the same patch of ground that had looked so different like only an hour before so I took you know a bit of film either way and I'm going to end the video on that <laughs> but we'll do that at the end we'll do that at the end so yeah it's going to be Monday cheers for um, everybody who's come over and joined me on Patreon. And it's also going to be happy Valentine's Day and cheers to everybody who's watching this on Tuesday. I'd love to be telling you now what we're gonna be doing next week, um, but I haven't got a clue. Kind of depends what the weather does. So obviously the first couple of days where we've got sunshine like this, um, I'm not gonna be at the allotment. So that's that out. And then the rest of the week, if it's thunderstorms, don't know what we're gonna do. 
I do think what would be good is if we can get some compost. My back is a bit better. I mean, as you can see, look, <laughs> I'm not walking like that anymore, which is good. Um, it's sort of kind of settled down again. Uh, so hopefully that's going to stay settled down for a while because that's not much fun. When the compost shop is open again on the weekend, hopefully I will be back to full strength and we'll be able to go and pick up a load of manure, get some more beds mulched. Uh, you saw that we had quite a lot of spare space. Um, so like where, where we've cleared stuff from the allotment. So all of that needs to be mulched, getting ready for spring. Maybe we'll do that. Although that's gonna be really fun in the rain, isn't it? <laughs> I guess we just see what the weather's doing. So cheers to an endless sea of tomatoes. And uh, have a look at the mist. It was amazing. <laughs> That's a bit more like it, isn't it? <laughs> Have a cup of tea and the entire world has changed.